everyone? It's Shanice, aka Chona Ari, aka Pineapple Styles, and I'd like to welcome you back to my channel. As you can tell by the title, we are going to be doing a um, hairstyle tutorial type of thing. I am going to be doing Senegalese twist. It was one of my favorite styles on my TWA. This is actually a style I did two years ago. It's February, 2023. This is a style I did two years ago in 2021 when I was in cosmetology school and I was just feeling super duper inspired. So because it was a fire style, I'm definitely going to do it again, recreate it, bring it back and make a video out of it because it's still not something I've seen done by people. I mean, the colors have become more popular, but it's still unique to me. So I'm gonna just go ahead and post a video on it. Here is the style that I did. And so, yeah, we're just gonna get right into this video. So first thing I need to do, if you can't tell, is shampoo and condition my hair last time i washed it was honestly yesterday i just conditioned it so i'm just gonna go ahead and shampoo and condition my hair in the shower and then i'll be back to show you guys me blow drying my hair okay i am back i have shampooed and conditioned my hair i shampoo my hair two times that's something i took from cosmetology school i mean it just makes sense anyway I personally probably don't need to because I wash my hair kind of often, but with clients, I always shampoo their hair more than once. If it's just a regular style or whatever, twice. If they just came out of a protective style or if they haven't washed their hair in over two weeks, I shampoo three times. So when I shampooed my hair, I used the Mizani Moisture Rich Shampoo, um, well, Moisture Replenish Shampoo. And then I also used the Aveda Sat Moss Weightless um shampoo <clears throat> weightless hydration shampoo these are both moisturizing for me i used two moisturizing shampoos just different kinds because one i've always loved the sap moss line on my hair i have fine strands of hair so my hair gets weighed down with product and so i like the weightless hydration it just leaves my hair moisturized and soft without like feeling like there's a film on it and i like this one as well too but yeah, I just used the two of those. And then for a conditioner, <laughs> I bought this conditioner from the beauty supply store one time because I really needed conditioner and I didn't want to drive to my salon suite. So I've just been using this Urban Hydration Honey um, Health and Repair Deep Conditioner. And I just let that sit on my hair for a little while while I shower, you know, finish the shower and come back out. So this is what my hair is looking like with no products. As you can see, I have pretty defined curls and I think that's just because I'm a wash and go person. I do a lot of wash and goes, so my hair is mostly hydrated. And so the curls just pop without any products in there. And you can see my hair is hydrated because I always tell people, you see that sparkle that my hair has going on, that reflection of light? That's because it's holding on to the strands of, I mean, strands. It's holding on to the water, right? So my hair is hydrated because it has held onto the water and when you massage your hair with conditioner and pull your sebum down through your strands, that's like the first and best way to kind of trap in the moisture in your hair. Your natural scalp oil, I mean, it's there for a reason. So I like to do that like when I'm condition rinsing out conditioner, I'll just massage and just pull that sebum down and then you'll see the hair sparkling like this. And I started doing that back uh, in senior year of high school and my hair has always flourished whenever I've done that. So now that that's done, let's get into the blow. -dry. Okay, so before I blow dry my hair, I'm of course gonna use some products. I start off with the Bamboo and Silk HCO Leave-In Conditioner Spray from Design Essentials. Um, bamboo and Silk, that's more like protein and I believe in balancing out your hair. So if you're gonna use a lot of hydrating products, you need to use protein somewhere. For me, at least, I've seen that that works well in length retention. So this is gonna be my little bit of protein. So just gonna spray that on my hair. Make sure it's getting in there. Oh, best part about short hair too, you just rub the products and you don't gotta do nothing else. Oh, it's amazing, but I'm growing it out. So this is kind of the start to like my hair journey, I guess. I've been keeping my hair short for six years. So now we're on the seventh year, so. We're growing it out, but then I like to use my Myel Organics Pomegranate and Honey Leave-In Conditioner. I like using milk type products, things that are really lightweight because again, my hair gets built up easily. So I use about that much 
and as you can see it's very it's a thin product but it's still like it's not watery so i just rub that in my hands and massage it through my hair all right and then i have the design essentials silk essentials thermal strengthening serum again strengthening protein they kind of go hand in hand so balance so i take five pumps of that i know that might sound like a lot but you gotta think about it my hand is gonna absorb most of my hands are gonna absorb most of it and i just rub it in because my hair is short just making sure i'm running my fingers through Yep. So you see, again, there's that sparkle I'm talking about. So I had that before applying products. So that's how you know my hair was already hydrated and kind of locking in just that water. And now putting products on top of it is kind of like double dehydration, especially because I'm going to be braiding my hair. All right, so that is done. I got my handy dandy Dyson and I'm going to start off by pre-drying my hair. We learned this term in cosmetology school. It just means that you dry your hair, sorry. You dry your hair um, about 75 to 80% dry before you actually start trying to stretch the hair. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm actually going to start, the settings are here. I'm gonna have high speed air, so you're gonna see three lights and then I'm gonna have medium heat. So you're gonna see two lights. So you see with the pre-dry, I'm making fast movements, not focusing on any one section. And this is how you reduce the amount of direct heat that you have per section. If you go through pre-dry everything, of course, this is for short hair. Longer hair is different. You do want to take sections and pre-dry each section. But because my hair is so short, I'm just going to go in, pre-dry the whole thing, and then I'm going to come back and focus on sections. So... Tip number one for my short hair TWA girls, all right? Or boys, whoever, for everybody. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's more dry now. So now I'm gonna go ahead, take off the concentrator nozzle, and I'm going to put on my comb attachment, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually increase the heat to high heat, so that's three, and I'm gonna keep the speed of the air the same um, and I'm just going to go through and stretch out my hair. So let's get into that. We're going to turn up the heat to three, speed three, and get to it. last step of my blow dry process I'm going to take off the comb attachment put on my concentrator and then I'm going to go ahead and spray the mist again on my hair after blow drying I do add to, like to add back a little product just to again seal everything in and then I'm going to take a little more serum and of course, I only use one pump this time. You should be aware, obviously, that like the more product you use, the more like steam you're going to get from the blow dryer. But as you can see, mine wasn't very smoky because my hair isn't dirty. So dirty hair gives you smoke and like product gives you steam. And the reason that the dirty hair gives you smoke is because that's obviously product mixed in with natural hair oil, sweat, like, you know, all of that other stuff. But when it's clean with just product, you'll see a little steam coming through. So as you can see, my hair is stretched out. So yeah, I'm just trying to make sure it's completely hydrated and protected. And so I'm just rubbing that in. As you can see, most of it's still on my hands. So that means that my hair isn't dry because if your hair was like dry as in it needed more product, it would actually absorb everything from your hands. So that's a good sign. So I'm just gonna kind of rub that in. <laughs> and then I'm going to get 
my brush. This is the only brush I have. Normally I'd use a round brush and I'm going to also turn the heat down to two. So it's going to be on medium heat just to make sure my hair absorbs in the last of the product. And then I like to finish on cold air. I do this for everyone because cold air closes the cuticle. So that's how I kind of make sure that all the moisture is sealed in. So turn it on. It's down to two. finished blow drying literally took all of 10 minutes of course the beauty is I have short hair so that's easy but also because I have a method to my madness right like I know what I'm doing I know how to stretch my hair and I know how to make sure my hair is hydrated so this is what my fro is looking like obviously way more stretched out now with no shape as a hairstylist hate not having a shape to my hair right now is really high on top so for me my normal shape just to enhance my long head is to bring these in give me a real you know but it's all right we're growing it out so not gonna worry about it but yeah this is what it looks like stretched out as you can see it's relatively straight like it's stretched enough that if i wanted to straighten it it would probably get bone straight but this is what i'm working with in terms of length so not very long so yeah on to the next step. All right, so I'm back from work. My head kind of hurts because that blue light from the computer, killer. I'm in my guest bathroom. If you've watched any of my house videos, you might or might not have seen this bathroom. It depends on what video I've uploaded by now. But this is what my hair is looking like after like six hours, six to seven hours of being blow dried. It's still stretched. It's still good. So we're gonna take off this little headband and that headband was not tight at all and what i like to do to prepare is to pre-part all of my rows in the front and as much as i can of the back why because i just like to sit on the couch braid my hair make my life easy so i'm just gonna go ahead and pre-part everything and i'm actually going to just go ahead and do even the little subsections for each braid Let's just make my whole life easy. I think I'm just gonna subsection the front alone though. So you're gonna watch me do this in the bathroom. All right, so I'm back. This is our position and this is how you're gonna watch me part. When I pre-part the hair, I do not use product just because it makes the hair revert back faster. So I only apply product to my parts and to my rows when I'm actually going to braid my hair. I got another parting comb because for some reason, every comb in my house gets lost. So I got this one for the house. And then I have these clips that I buy from my salon. I love these because it's like giant duckbill clips so they can hold bigger sections of hair. And then I do have one small duckbill clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in time-lapse just because phone memory, but I'll see you guys. Well, you can watch me part my hair. I'm hot okay I normally don't do my hair in this bathroom but I chose this one because it's the brightest and it has a mirror that's actually tall enough for me <sighs> but this is what we're working with so far for the front so I'm just gonna go downstairs to the living room and y'all can watch me braid there and I'm just gonna you know obviously talk about some things while I braid but I'm going to show you the types of hair I'm going to use next coming to you live from my couch 
I'm downstairs because I'm going to watch TV. It's behind the camera. But I am going to show you the hair. So two years ago when I was braiding only, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was only using the Outre Expressions pre-stretched. It was thick. It was full. The packs came with a lot of hair. I loved it. Plus, they had loads of colors. But that was just the store I could get it at. Today, and the store that I live by now sells mostly Rua. So I now use Rua. And in the past style that I did, again, picture will be inserted. I was basically doing a scissor inspired color, but in braids. So I did a 27613, <laughs> wrong one, 27613 blend in the highlights like the two front pieces and just a couple pieces throughout my head and then the majority of the hair was 350 because that's just such a fire color and I did it like spring to summertime so it was really the perfect summer color but we still in the winter so I'm probably going to use a little more of the 27 613 mixture we'll see it's hopefully not going to be too many braids on my head anyway as you can tell in the front I got one two oh one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 13, 14. So in this front portion right here, and that's of course not all of the front rows, I have about 14 pieces, 14 uh, sections parted off. So that's gonna be 14 braids in the front. So I'm gonna blend these myself just because they didn't have 27 and 613. And then, yeah. I'll just go from there. Okay, so this is what the hair looks like blended. As you can see, that 27 really balances out the 613. And being someone who's really into color when it comes to hair, um, I look for brands where the hair colors aren't too warm or too ash. So that's also why I like Rua because it's more on the neutral side and I have a neutral complexion. So I'm brown, but I'm neutral. And so with that, I want neutral colors just because it's going to complement me more. Neutral to warm because I have a neutral to warm complexion. So this is more complementary to me than Pure 613. And so I'm going to use this for the two front braids and maybe like another highlight braid on each side of the front. So yeah, I'm just gonna separate this into sections of three because how I'm going to go about these Senegalese twists is a method that I first tried back in January of 2021. So like two years ago, okay? And I saw it pop up like half a year later. I was gonna make a YouTube video on it, but I never edited the video because I'm me and I've been trying to do this for like 10 years, but you know, better late than never, right? So it's basically doing knotless braids, but as twists. And I knew someone else would think of it too because it's not anything really complex. Okay, you know? so I finished separating the hair. I've done the copper hair. And then I've done a few pieces of the 61327 blonde mixture just for those very front pieces of hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to braiding. So I've showed y'all my pieces of hair. I got my lights set up over here and I'm going to start braiding. I got some products. I'm using the Peruvian White Braid and Lock Gel Apple Cider Vinegar Extra Hold. It's one of my go-to products. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start on the first braid. So I'm just gonna take this out. All right, and then I'm just gonna clip that back again. So all the straight's gone, I'm gonna move my glasses. And I can see, but it's better to have my glasses on. All right, and then we're gonna just gel the section down. 
all parts of the section. I am gonna pull this back and just pull out. I don't really have a lot of edges, but I am gonna pull that hair out. Just so it's not pulling. I am pretty sensitive to tension, and so I prefer to just leave out that hair. There you go. All right, and then we're gonna comb through the section with product in it. All right, take some more product. I'm gonna split this into three. So one, two, three. Okay. And we're just gonna take our hair and do it like a knotless braid. So I got my first section of hair, well, my first piece of hair. So we're gonna start on the braid, right? So go right to center and I hook the hair from behind so I hook this hair back here and then I'm going to take the center piece and bring it behind and bring the left to the center right and I'm going to do that same motion again and I'm going to take another piece of braiding hair I'm gonna add that in there, behind. So there's that. Take this hair and twist it under. Go again. And also I do tuck my hair. I tuck everyone's hair. It's just better for the hair. It protects it from drying out as fast, from the elements. We're getting one more piece of hair, adding that to the braid. And that would be my final piece. So yeah, I tuck it under and I can feel where my hair is. So I just take that, cover it with the braiding hair and tuck it under. And then just kind of stick with that. So yep, here we have my braid in there. So I'm just gonna braid it just two more times. And then I'm going to split this hair and start twisting. So we split it. And then for Senegalese twists, you twist each strand and then you twist it together the opposite direction. So I turn it to the left, twist it to the right. And that's also known as a rope twist. Turn it to the left, twist it to the right, turn it to the left, twist it to the right. And you just keep doing that. Once you get used to it, you don't really need to dramatically turn it anymore. You can just turn it in your fingers. So that's what I do. But yeah, so you can see where my hair is, obviously. And then just take more product and work my way down. I do love twists because they are so much faster than braids. And when I tell you Senegalese twists used to be my jam, like these were the only style I would wear, Senegalese twists with color. In high school, that was when I was first allowed to wear braid extensions. So the first time I ever did Senegalese twists on myself, I did black and in the back, I did black and blue because I wanted a peekaboo color and no one could tell me nothing. So I was always into color from the moment I could do it on myself. I just wasn't as vibrant with it. So yeah, these aren't gonna be as large as my other ones were just because my hair, like because I'm starting it as a knotless braid, it's not, like it's not gonna be conducive for me to make it too big for my hair. And that's the main thing that people don't recognize with knotless braids. You increase the tension of the braid if the hair is too heavy for that section. Knotless braids depend on your hair for support versus box braids, the support is within the braiding hair. So yeah, it's always important. So I made it to the bottom of my twist and I'm actually just braiding it. It's very small so you can't even see it. And I'm just doing that because even though it's a rope twist and it should hold, I do want it to really last me for a little while. So I just want to braid that end. And here we go. This is my first twist. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in time lapse and do this whole side.
just to look into your eyes and do nothing. Yeah, honey, that's my own getaway. Cooking right now. But this is what we're working with. <laughs> Super cute. This is my hairstyle. I'm done. <laughs> I wish. So I separated some more hair and the blonde pieces are still there, but they're finally about to get used because I'm going to do these front two. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the back ones copper. And then I'm going to move to the back of my hair and work my way up. While I'm working on the back, y'all probably won't see me as much. I'll just check in here and there just because time and phone memory. So Yes, but it's already looking cute. Can you see the vision? Can you see it? Because I can see it. <laughs> All right, well, y'all can watch me work on the front bun. in my head on your chest, it's a dream for me. Loving on my man, that's my only plan. Chilling with my baby. It sounds perfect, don't you say? Hey, darling, let's play. Tell me all your fantasies. Ain't nobody else. telling y'all i had to run this style back because it was cute even without the back i mean come on like this is cute remember i also did it in 2021 okay remember i did it two years ago two years ago and two years later it's still fire like i don't care what nobody's saying it's still a fire style. And that's why I'm gonna run it back every time. <laughs> every single time. <laughs> now I gotta do the back of my hair, so. I'll probably be back when I have like two braids left, so. I'll see y'all later. It is 9.47. I'm hoping by like maybe midnight, I can be like through most of my hair. So I'll be back. All right, y'all, so it's 12.30 a.m. I did one little row of three blonde braids in the back. And I, I will, and then I added one on this side, too. I will say the, low, the bottom back section, I did too small. That was my fault. I didn't part above my ear. I part below my ear. I don't know why that made sense in my mind, but I did it. So then these two middle ones are a little bigger. But such is life. It's still cute. And who gonna say anything? Cause as always, like, if you're not gonna do my hair, then you can't tell me anything. We are back and we got my lights. So I'm gonna just put this up here. Shining, 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 yeah. Beyonce said it best, right? So yeah, this is what we're working at. Isn't this super cute? I've definitely gotten lots of compliments. Like I said, this is unique, all right? This is unique. I did it once, I did it twice, and I still haven't seen nobody else do it. So just saying, but yeah. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you like the style. If you do and you wanna see me do more, definitely hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and drop a comment. Tell me what other colors I should try. My edges are not edging, but don't judge me. 